What's up, everyone? It's Hattie again, ready to bring you another scouting report for the Habs 2022 NHL draft picks. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. This is one of my favorite prospects from the 2022 class in Lane Hudson. Before we get into it, though, just remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the channel out a lot and lets me know that you guys like the content. Uh, feel free to comment as well if you have any uh, recommendations, any suggestions you want for the videos, any other things you want to see. So to get into it here, Lane Hudson, we already know how small he is, 5'8", 159 pounds. Uh, he's a tiny little guy. Uh, left-handed shooter, uh, and, you know, putting that aside, just look at his point totals here. I mean, 63 points in 60 games as a defenseman for the NTDP. 27 of those 60 games were played in the USHL, and he put up 32 points in those games. So really impressive point totals. The USHL is kind of a mid-level league. It's I say it's below the level of the CHL, but not by a lot. Um, and the level keeps going up and up with each year. Um, the surrounding teams in the USHL get better and better with each season, so... Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty worthwhile league to scout. So if you look just in the USHL, uh, in the league's history, no draft-eligible uh, defenseman has ever put up more points per game than Lane Hudson here at 1.19. So he had a better point-per-game total than Cam York, who was playing with Cole Caulfield, with uh, Trevor Zegras, Alex Turcotte, Matt Boldy. He was playing top power play minutes. Lane Hudson is too, but... Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, he's the main power play quarterback. He split time with other defensemen. Yes, he had Logan Cooley and Frank Nazar, but those guys aren't at the level of the Caulfields and, and Zegras's and Turcotts and Boldies that we saw in Cam York's draft year. So, you know, to put up this many points is tremendous uh, for him. And then we look at the NTDP in general, and same thing, no NTDP defenseman has put up more points per game with the NTDP uh, than Lane Hudson has this season. So these, he's basically had a historical year, and he still managed to slip to 62, and we all know why. The reason is right here. Um, so, yeah, let's get into the data here and see what he does very well. Um, but I'm very, very hopeful about what Lane Hudson can bring to the game. Real quick, I just wanted to show you guys the games that I have uh, data for. So the first game I have uh, for Lane Hudson is his 3-2 overtime win against the Green Bay Gamblers, in which he earned no points. Uh, the second game I have is this 9-4 win against the Madison Capitals in which he earned a goal and an assist. And th the third game I have actually doesn't show up on, th on this list at all. It's um, a, a game he played against the University of Minnesota in something called the College Series where the NTDP faces off against uh, NCAA teams. Uh, and the University of Minnesota was a pretty good program. I think they lost that game 5-3. Uh, but I think that was the best of the three games that I watched for Lane Hudson for this, uh, for this uh, analysis and breakdown. So... Now let's get into the data, and uh, we'll see what I mean. All right, so data-wise, there's a lot to look at, so we'll go through this pretty quick. Uh, first, he played more on the PK than on the power play in this sample, which is pretty interesting to me. That means his coaches trust him with those situations. He only took six shots in the three games I tracked, though, uh, which isn't ideal. Working on using a shot more and being more accurate since he missed half of them uh, would help him a lot. Um, if you look here in terms of passing, though, there's really nothing to criticize. He's, you know, he attempted 121 passes in three games, so about 40 passes a game, or about two passes a minute. Uh, so really high volume and also high efficiency uh, with that 89.2% uh, success rate, which is tremendous. He didn't miss a single pass on the power play. Um, so if you exclude those because they're pretty easy passes, you still have 85.8% in terms of accuracy, which is tremendous. Um, only 11.5% of his passes were to high danger areas, but that's mostly because of how involved he was on the breakout and how many passes he did have. Um, if you remember, Owen Beck had uh, 11 out of 16 passes into high danger areas, and he's a forward. So to have these numbers still is pretty good. And I just want to focus on this right here. So 17 of his passes led immediately to shots. So even though he's not passing into dangerous areas often, he's passing in areas for his teammates to pick up the puck, skate into open ice, and get some shots off, which is always great. Um, this is really what you'd expect from a 5'8 defenseman. Uh, a lot of loose puck retrievals because he uses his brain and his feet well to get to, to dump ins first uh, and win puck races. Um, but not as good in, on contested battles, uh, 13 out of 30 for 43.3% uh, success rate on contested battles. So working on that could help a lot. Um, in terms of play driving, though, there's nothing to criticize. Uh, all of his play driving metrics are in the positives, which is always great, especially the high danger chances metric. So 22 for, 11 against, amazing. Um, he's good on the breakout, as I mentioned, but as you notice, as he gets forward, there's less and less line carries. Um, and that's because he loves to pass out of his zone. So the main thing he does when he does carry the puck is he'll carry it across the blue line and find a really smart pass 
after that. So it's a good habit of his. And if you see here, he wasn't successful on any of his dump-ins. What I consider a successful dump-in is one that leads to offensive possession. So um, he's much better when he's passing out of his own or carrying the puck out of his own. Um, but the dump-ins aren't something that he favors to start with. And it's not something he's the best at either. And in terms of takeaways and turnovers, I don't think he was as involved as he should have been defensively uh, with only eight takeaways. The turnovers are pretty normal for a defenseman because when you dump out the puck um, and it ends up on the opponent's stick, that's usually a turnover. Uh, so stuff like that. He was pretty disruptive, but again, for a defenseman, you'd expect higher numbers here. Um, and this is a new stat I've added for defensemen. It's called controlled zone entry denials. Um, this is basically any time that a defenseman is going to stop the opposition from entering the zone with control, either by stopping the puck itself or stopping the puck carrier or forcing a dump in. Um, so he averaged three of those a game, uh, denying the opposition from setting up in the offensive zone. So uh, decent but very much improvable defensive stats. The passing data is off the charts. Um, so this gives me the idea that we're looking at a, a player who's really intelligent, really offensively gifted, uh, but with some defensive limitations. So Lane Hudson is going to be number 23 in blue or in white. So the first thing we're going to look at in this game is his tremendous playmaking ability, his ability to find seams, to connect with teammates on the rush. This helps him a lot on the breakout as he finds his options really well. He can pass through players. He can pass around them. He's good at retrieving pucks and then playing quick passes through pressure. Um, right on his teammate sticks. So really just a very versatile and very accurate playmaking game, which helps him make passes like these through multiple checks. And you can see his vision on this play here as he gets around the net and finds Logan Cooley mid-stride for uh, a zone entry and a shot. Um, so it helps him set up his teammates. He's also able to lead the rush off the puck, uh, make passes and skate into areas, play give and go. He can also start the rush with a quick pass without even needing to skate. Uh, so he, he just combines everything very well in terms of um, his brains, his hands, uh, his vision to connect with teammates on a regular basis. This also helps him in the offensive zone where he uses weight shifts and uh, head fakes, fake shots, stuff like that in order to uh, find and open up lanes, especially on the power play. Uh, you're going to see that here as he passes to his teammate uh, for a decent shot. Again, just finds his teammates in the slot very well. Um, he can connect with one-touch plays as well. Uh, so just a very versatile uh, passing game. Next up, we're going to look at probably my favorite part of Lane Hudson's game, and that's his deceptiveness and manipulation. So his ability to use head fakes, stops and starts, uh, slick moves, edge work, all that good stuff in order to open up space for himself to make plays uh, is really tremendous. He also never gives up on plays, which helps him get the puck into dangerous areas regardless. Um, and here's my favorite play of his. As he's going to play give and go with his teammate, he's going to lift the defensive stick and put his stick on the ice immediately um, to get the puck, and then he's going to make a quick stop here. And that's going to open up enough space for him to delay and make a saucer pass to his teammate through his pressure. So just very, very intelligent, very under aware of his surroundings and aware of how to open up space for himself. So this is why I don't think Hudson's going to struggle with his lack of size, is that he doesn't struggle at all in terms of making space for himself with the puck. Um, his ability to make plays through pressure, his ability to absorb pressure and, and find place through the middle of the ice, fool defensemen into thinking he's going to go one way and then going the other. Um, and just in general, his ability to think the game two, three steps ahead and make plays that his opponents don't predict or don't don't have in mind um, is, is really tremendous. He's able to completely fool them into going one way, and then the next thing you know, he's gone the other. Just like that, he loves this inside-out move that he does a lot, um, and it helps him open up a bunch of space for himself to make a play. Um, in general, I don't think there's a single moment where Hudson really is hemmed in or, or stuck with the puck. Uh, whatever happens, he's able to make sure that he finds the space to make plays. And he's also really good at playing one-touch hockey like this. He's going to play a beautiful one-touch pass to, to Logan Cooley, and uh, that almost leads to a goal. In general, he just does a tremendous job of extending offensive possession in the zone, reading plays off the puck as well, understanding when the rim is coming in order to understand when he needs to um, attack the boards and get the puck. Uh, and just in general, there's not much really stopping him from making the plays that he wants to make uh, in the offensive zone. He's able to cycle around with the puck and uh, make plays with regularity that fool opponents into um, not knowing what he's going to do next. And that's what I think is really going to make his game so special at the next level. 
Hudson's also really good at pinching, in, in the, both offensively and defensively, to keep plays alive. Um, so here you're going to see him. As the puck's going to go around, he's going to pinch for a bit, but then as his teammate gets it, he's going to back up to offer support at the blue line. And on the next play, he identifies that his teammate's not going to get there, and he decides to pinch, and at least do a shot for his team. So really aware of when to pinch and when not to pinch in order to keep plays alive and uh, help his teammates. Um, and he he loves to open up space for himself below the goal line as well to make plays. So he doesn't hesitate to uh, move up the ice and make plays. Uh, again, he just loves this inside-out move um, and uh, doesn't hesitate to circle the net. Uh, this is at 5-on-5, five five, by the way. He's still able to um, get around opponents and make plays. Hudson's also really good on retrievals, and the reason for that is how good he is with his back to the play. He's able to use the boards and triangulate to find his opponents in better areas to break out the puck. Um, and he's also extremely aware of his surroundings, understanding what's going on around him. And the reason for that is how often he shoulder checks and looks around him to see what's going on. So here you're going to see him shoulder check three times and identify that his teammates are going to be free on the far side. He's also extremely good at spinning off pressure and finding his teammates in good areas. Um, so he doesn't hesitate to reload under the puck. He's also good at absorbing pressure and helping his teammates get the puck. So a really versatile breakout game. So now let's look at Hudson's skating stride. So even though Hudson has great edge work and four-way mobility, uh, his forward stride does have a bit of issues. Uh, first, he heel strikes, so his heel hits the ice first when he's skating with his uh, regular forward strides, which isn't ideal. He does use crossovers really well, but when he's skating forward, um, the heel strikes first, and also his um, his knees recover a bit wide. So instead of bending more towards the middle as he's recovering his knee forward after each stride, um, he tends to uh, recover a bit wide. So it's sort of like he's stomping his way up the ice with his forward strides, which isn't ideal. Um, if those two issues are rectified, I can only imagine how much better Hudson would be with a perfect stride. Uh, and he's already working on that with uh, Adam Nicholas. Uh, they're working on his outside edge utilization, which is really important, making sure that he uses his outside edges more on, on his strides. Um, so that's already in the works. They already know what to fix in that sense. So I'm hopeful that Hudson's skating will get even better with time. His shooting does need a bit of work, especially in terms of diversifying his arsenal. Um, right now, he mainly uses wristers to get shots on net, but he uses his skating really well in order to get into those areas and get better shots off. Um, I just think adding different shots to his arsenal will help out a lot, but he does have a beautiful uh, curl and drag wrister here, which leads to a goal. Next, we'll look at some of Hudson's weaknesses. So we'll start with his rush defending. Um, it's not really projectable right now. He defends with his stick really extended ahead of him and his body bent forward. Uh, NHL defenders are going to be able to exploit this pretty well, so fixing that would be really uh, important in terms of his uh, you know, defensive projectability. Um, but he's really, really smart. He sticks with plays really well uh, and understands what's going on. I don't think that's an issue. He's never out of the play mentally. It's just matching his uh, opponent's footwork and sticking with them through plays and actually stopping the plays he's trying to stop. Um, so generally, it's just technique issues because he understands what's happening. And I really feel like as the year went on, he got better at this. Um, because my first two viewings were in January and the third one was in April. And the game in April, I feel, was the best one in terms of rush defending and, uh, and entry prevention. Uh, he was able to stick with the opponents a lot better, um, block some slot passes. Uh, some are still going through because of this posture that he has off the rush. Um, but in general, he's just really intelligent and understands what's happening and does a great job of uh, being in the right spots. But once he's in the right spots, is he able to stop those chances is what matters more. Um, so working on his posture, working on his technique is really going to help him because he's already got the, the mobility and the edge work in order to um, be in the places that he needs to be to stop chances. But it's really just about making sure that once he's there, you know, that he's able to actually stop the puck or, or get the puck off his opponent's sticks. And also initiating contact is a bit of an issue. Uh, he tends to bounce off contact really easily, and that's obviously because he's pretty small. But in general, I think, you know, you can be a small defender and defend really well. You only have to look at players like uh, Mike Weaver, like uh, Samuel Gerrard, who are really good at defending off the rush. Um, it's just about improving his posture, really. Lastly, we'll look at Hudson's in-zone defending. So uh, he does a really great job, surprisingly, of boxing out the front of the net, uh, keeping opponents out of his goalie's field of view. Obviously, he needs to get stronger to get even better at that, but he already has the technique and the understanding of when to get involved. He does a great job of getting sticks on pucks in his own zone, but he does get out-muscled pretty easily at times, and in general, he can get a bit aggressive on plays, uh, take himself out of plays a, a tiny bit. He's a good example of that, so he's going to follow his check into the high slot. And it's going to leave someone open uh, down low for a decent chance against. Um, but he does show some good flashes of puck protection down low and uh, makes great plays on the breakout, combines his defending with his offense really well to uh, connect with his teammates and make plays. 
It's just really a matter of um, improving his tendency to get a bit aggressive. He's still able to block shots, get sticks on pucks again. Just um, Sometimes he gets, you know, he does that thing where he extends his stick and, and uh, bends forward. He's also pretty easy to box out due to his lack of strength. But in general, Hudson has good understandings. It's just a matter of getting less aggressive. He wants to do a bit of everything uh, when he's on the ice. He wants to uh, be the person that's uh, getting the puck back and moving it up. And sometimes that'll take him out of place. But when he settles into his role, especially on the PK, uh, when he was on the penalty kill, it was really obvious that he was more understanding of his role and more um, comprehending of what his position should be. But a five on five, sometimes um, he'll gravitate towards the puck and, and get a bit aggressive and that'll free up someone. Here's the only penalty kill goal that I saw against him. And um, he just got he just got to the slot late and wasn't able to get a stick on the puck. Um and again, just sometimes we'll get out-muscled. But as is, again, as the season went on, he got better at this. So I'm not too worried about that. So to recap, Lane Hudson's tremendous situational awareness and his advanced play reading and scanning habits combine extremely well with his high-end puck skills, his four-wave ability, and his fearlessness on the puck to make him an outstanding offensive defenseman. It helps him find passing lanes in all three zones at an elite level. It gives him an unparalleled ability to manipulate and deceive opponents to open up lanes and maximize his chances of hitting his target with the multitude of passes that he has in his arsenal. And it allows him to make accurate reads and plays at high speeds. If his skating is improved even further to work out his heel striking and his wide recoveries, uh, Hudson's brain is still going to be able to keep up with his newfound third gear of separation speed. And that's going to make him an exponentially more lethal threat offensively while also improving his defensive posture and his ability to match opponents' feet when defending the rush. He's also going to need to learn to play under physical pressure when retrieving pucks, since he won't be able to beat opponents positionally as often as he does in juniors. All in all, with some smart work from Adam Nicholas and the rest of the Habs development staff, Hudson could develop into a premier offensive defenseman at the next level, uh, the type of guy who could run a power play effortlessly and regularly get fans out of their seats. The foundations of intelligence, skills, and execution speeds are already solid grounds to start building up his game, but he's going to need a lot of polishing to make it to the NHL and then stick there. But that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to help grow the channel, and uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with the rest of my scouting work, uh, get notifications for these videos as soon as they come out, and much more. Uh, I'm going to be taking a little break from these videos to work on some stuff over at Dauber Prospects, but I should have a scouting report on Adam Engstrom out in a couple weeks. Paddy out.